Leopard seals look so cute, don't they? You wouldn't expect a creature with such lovely eyes to harm you, especially since, on TV, seals were always represented as playful animals who like to goof around with humans. But leopard seals are apex predators you shouldn't trust that much. After all, they got the name after a black spotted coat, similar to the one a big cat has. That means they're at the top of the food chain, with rarely any other animal ready to oppose them. It's not that common, but there are known cases where they attacked humans. They're generally more aggressive than other seals. And they're not animals that play well with others. Generally, they prefer to spend time by themselves. The ends of their mouths are permanently curled upward, which looks like they always smile. Since they're solitary animals, finding a partner is harder, so they vocalize to attract it. They even sometimes sing underwater. Dingoes. When you see one, you might think you're looking at an average street dog. But be careful. Dingoes are more closely related to wolves than dogs. They're the biggest land predator in Australia and apex predators. They go after their prey in packs. When they get together, they can confront even bigger animals like the red kangaroo. They generally avoid humans, but when in significant numbers, you should avoid them. Who doesn't love pandas? Because they look so adorable and innocent, they've become a symbol of kindness and peace. Also, they're very lazy since they spend most of their time resting and eating bamboo. Sounds peaceful, but you better not mess with them. If you accidentally cross a panda's territory or the animal senses you're a danger, it can hurt you. They have strong jaws and claws, and in most cases, they're way stronger than humans. They rarely attack humans, but you're safer knowing that pandas are one of those animals you should leave to enjoy their own peace. Slow Loris These animals are so slow that even when something dangerous is approaching, they just stop moving. And don't let their big wide eyes and tiny nose get you. This creature may be adorable, but its bite is venomous and can get you into a lot of trouble. Scientists say Slow Loris tends to mimic a cobra, it's one of the few venomous mammals in the animal kingdom. And they don't secrete the venom in their mouth like a majority of other animals. Their secret lies in a sweat gland on their arms. So when you think about it, it's not a cute teddy bear, but more like a real little monster. The same goes with koalas. They look so calm, but they'll also attack you if they see you as a threat. It's not that they're typically dangerous animals. They spend most of their time high in eucalyptus trees since they sleep 22 hours a day. And if you came across a koala in the wild, the animal would probably just climb higher so it could avoid you. But if it felt threatened, it would most likely use its teeth and claws as a defense. A swan does not only look delicate and graceful, but romantic too. Many associate swans with true love, but in their case, love hurts because these animals could really harm you. If they see you as a potential danger, they'll do whatever it takes to protect themselves and especially their young. First, they will start hissing like a cat and then flap their giant wings. You should already be running at this point because they can use their strong beaks to pull, bite, and hit with their powerful wings. Platypus. This one looks a bit like a mythical creature and a combination of different animals. Take a look at its webbed feet and the snout. Definitely a duck, right? It has the fur of an otter and a paddle tail like a beaver. And they look so graceful when you see them swimming underwater using their webbed front feet. But they're not so elegant while walking on land. You see their nails come out so they can walk better. Also, the males are venomous. You can see sharp stingers on the heels of their rear feet. And remember, they'll use them for self-defense. Poison Dart Frog A toad looks way more dangerous than this small, charming one that looks surprisingly beautiful, considering it's a frog. But in reality, a toad is just not that good-looking. It won't harm you, unlike a poison dart frog. There are over a hundred poison dart frog species, and they all have different toxicity levels. The golden one is the most dangerous, that can take down 10 humans if they only touch it. A hedgehog has a special place in most people's hearts. Looking at this cute creature curling up like a little ball and running so innocently. But it's still a prickly animal that uses the spikes when it feels it needs to defend itself from something dangerous. Its quills can puncture your skin and well, that hurts. The anteater. 
With their warm, benign eyes, anteaters look so harmless. They don't even have teeth to defend themselves and hurt us. But they do have claws. They mostly use them to get food, but they won't hesitate to use them when they believe you could harm them. Also, did you know their tongues are covered in spikes? Yup, that's their main tool for collecting food. And their tongue can be up to two feet long. It's long and narrow, so anteaters can easily maneuver it down into some pretty narrow spaces to look for termites and ants for lunch. Owls are not even that adorable, but they look so shy and clever. Plus, you'd never say they even pay any attention to you. But what can really make them mad is if you come closer and interfere with their nests. They have big, sharp claws, so it's not an animal you want to mess with. They can rotate their heads 270 degrees, so even if you're coming from their back, don't think they won't see you. Kangaroos aren't generally those animals that go around looking for trouble, but if you face them, they're not afraid to stand up for themselves and show you who's in charge. They can go after a human as if it's another kangaroo. Their arms are very strong, and they're even able to grapple with you with their forepaws. But it's way worse when they kick out with their hind legs. Deer look like they came from an idyllic fairy tale, but be careful. Males have antlers, and it can be tricky if you come too close and they perceive you as a potential threat. They also have a habit of trampling private gardens and eating what they find. They can be dangerous for some domestic animals people have in their backyards, especially dogs. Red foxes can't harm us looking like that, right? They can carry the rabies virus, so it's better not to interact with them too much, even though they generally avoid humans. They can be aggressive towards them and some small animals. They're pretty unpredictable, so be careful. Raccoons look friendly and cute, and it seems that the only trouble they can bring is turning over your trash can, but not quite. These little fellas are definitely not afraid to show their teeth when they sense something dangerous, even though it's just you going out to see what's making that noise in your trash can. And their little paws might be cute at first, but they're hiding sharp claws you wouldn't want to mess with. Tarsiers are among the tiniest and most adorable primates in the world, Although the first thing you'd want to do when you see one is to give them a hug, you better think twice. They're not outright dangerous, but they're not fans of humans trying to touch them, so they can react pretty neurotically if that happens. Better admire them from a distance. Want to check how well you know the animal kingdom? This fun quiz will help you. You'll need to guess if the statement is true or false before I reveal the truth. Don't forget to keep the score and share it in the comments. The head of the flamingo has to be positioned upside down when the bird eats. Hmm, what do you think? Could it be possible? Yep, that's the truth. You'll always recognize flamingos by their specific position. They tend to stand on one leg in shallow waters. They have to use the bristles located on the top of their beaks when they want to filter the muddy water they accidentally take along with the actual food. That's why they eat in a way where their head goes down. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to filter their meal properly. Do animals have fingerprints? It's true, animals do have fingerprints, but only some of them, like koalas, gorillas, and chimpanzees. The other name for fingertips is dermal ridges. They increase friction when we touch a certain surface. When you increase the size of the contact area between the surface and the fingers, it's way easier to hang on to things and have a firm, safe grip. About 5 million years ago, before primates started to move upright and left trees, they needed to have an extra strong grip. They had to leap from tree to tree without falling down or be able to grab a rock or some other tool they needed at that moment. Coolest thing though? Koalas have fingerprints so similar to those of humans, they can actually taint crime scenes. Here's a relatively easy one. Do wolves howl at the moon? Well, this one is a myth. Wolves do howl at night, but what else are they supposed to do if that's the time when they're the most active? Again, they do look up while howling, but not because they're looking at the moon, but because this helps the sound travel farther. This way, other wolves can hear them even when they're more than 7 miles away. This is how these animals communicate. Wolves even have a specific sound they use if they lose their pack. Opossums are such nice animals and they look so cute while hanging on their tails. 
but do they? It's just a myth! Once this animal is completely grown, it can't support its weight for more than a few seconds. The opossum becomes too heavy and they can't use its tail this way. But these animals do use their tails for balance, to hold onto tree branches when climbing. The goldfish has a three-second memory, true or false. Although that's how they're pictured most of the time, it's a myth. These fish can actually remember stuff for months or even years. Overall, goldfish are pretty intelligent animals. If you feed a goldfish at one side of the tank all the time, it quickly learns it needs to stay on that side if it wants to get food. Also, if you show it that pushing a blue paddle will get it a reward, which is, again, food, and pressing a red one doesn't, a goldfish will learn pretty fast what to do to get its meal. When a dolphin is asleep, half of its brain is awake. Is it true or false? This time, it's not a myth. Dolphins are marine mammals, but they breathe with the help of their lungs, unlike fish that breathe through gills. Dolphins can hold their breath for a really long time, that's true, but they still need to rise up to the surface to get some air. That's why the dolphin's brain is never fully asleep. It needs to have enough motor control at every moment so that the animal is aware when it has to go up to the surface to take a breath. Dolphins also have one eye open all the time they're asleep. Parrots are selfish and greedy. They're not into sharing things with other members of their species. This is a myth. It depends on the species, but many birds, including African gray parrots, always selflessly help each other out. They're truly and honestly motivated to help others, even if other birds aren't actually their friends. Some people are sure that ghost crabs can use the small teeth they have in their mouths to growl. What do you think about this? Is it true? Well, it's a myth, but half of it is true. These crabs indeed growl, but they do it using their teeth in their stomach. They can intimidate other animals with their claws, but when that doesn't work, they produce scary sounds with the help of the teeth that are in their stomachs. They have three main teeth, two lateral and one medial, that are hard and elongated, and they belong to the gastric mill apparatus in the crab's stomach. These teeth also grind up food by rubbing against each other. Your dog has fewer taste buds than you do. Tick tock, waiting for your answer. It's true. It may seem that your pet has a similar dinnertime experience as you do, but in reality, these animals actually have a different arrangement of taste buds. Dogs only have 1,700 taste buds, whereas humans have close to 9,000. But they still can distinguish the same four basic tastes, and they're not fond of salt. Speaking of dogs, they are colorblind. True or myth? This time, it's a myth. A lot of people believe that dogs see in black and white, which is not true. Pooches also see blue and yellow, which kind of makes them colorblind in the same way some people are. Dogs have two types of color receptors in their eyes, while people, on average, have three types. Hens don't have teeth. There's this old saying, rare as a hen's teeth, which isn't exactly how things are in real life. Hens can grow teeth. They had chompers about 70 to 80 million years ago. Even though those are gone now, hens still have the necessary genes, which means they can potentially regrow their teeth. If cows had stripes like zebras, flies would have avoided them. Could be or not. This one's true. Cows deal with pesky flies all the time. And zebra stripes are some kind of a natural bug repellent. It seems that the stripes work as some sort of disguise. It messes with insect vision and confuses them. Optical illusions baffle us in a similar way. Speaking of cows, do you think they're social animals or ones that prefer to avoid others and enjoy their own peaks? They're creatures with strong social ties that love being around friends. One study from 2013 showed that it was really stressful for cows to be separated from their BFFs. Aw, don't we all feel like that? The octopus has two hearts. Or does it have one like we mammals do? Neither is correct, because the octopus has three hearts. These animals use two of their hearts to pump blood to their gills. 
and the third heart transfers blood to other parts of the body. If you think that's unusual, what will you say about the fact that octopuses have nine brains? Besides the central brain, they have a mini brain in each of their eight arms. This helps their arms act independently. Here's one more fact about these animals. Their blood is blue. That's because the protein in their blood that carries oxygen around the body contains copper. Octopuses can also taste with their arms and move at a speed of 25 miles per hour. Polar bears have the thickest fur of all animals. Would you agree with that? It may seem like that at first. After all, they need a lot of protection to survive in such harsh conditions. And still, this is false. The fur of the polar bear has two layers and is designed in a way that traps air right next to the skin. That's why their skin remains dry. Cool! Bulls get angry when they see the color red. True or false? You're definitely not alone if you think they get angry when someone waves something red in front of them. But the truth is, bulls are actually red-green colorblind, just like other cattle. What really triggers them is the movement, not the color. If you touch a frog or toad, you can get warts. You've probably heard it many times. Sounds a bit far-fetched? It actually is, because it's a myth. And it probably appeared because many toads and frogs have bumpy, lumpy skin. And people used to think these bumps were contagious. As for warts, they're not something animals and humans spread to each other easily. When you think of the world's most dangerous bird, as I do sometimes, eagles or vultures may come to your mind. Surprisingly, these awkward cassowaries may cause way more damage than the other more notorious angry birds I first mentioned. The largest cassowary species may be as tall as an average person and weighing as much. These plump birds can't fly, but neither can you. Plus, they run fast, so don't you try to escape from them. They can reach you even in water since they're great swimmers. They can run as fast as 30 miles per hour, so you might need a getaway car if there's a cassowary who's mad at you. But don't worry, their attacks are quite rare anyways. Mute swans are gorgeous, graceful creatures. At least that's what we all think. But touching one of these 28-pound birds is a bad idea. They have bony spurs in their wings that they use to take enemies out. Their wingspan is about 8 feet, and they can slap you with all of that. And they also bite. Don't ever get too close to one. They regularly go after humans, especially if the bird has younglings nearby. And don't let the name fool you either. They aren't mute. Swans can hiss loudly and even bark. Good warning signs that you're encroaching a bit too close. Humans and magpies have always had weird, almost love-hate relationships. These medium-sized birdies can be pretty aggressive at times, but if you treat them well, you'll probably become friends. They can recognize human faces, and they're sure to come back to your balcony if you treat them to something yummy. If you offend a magpie, they're gonna remember that too and bear some grudges. So keep an eye on your eye, pardon the pun. Pelicans are symbols of love, and they say they're ready to sacrifice their own life to protect their offspring. Ah, now it's clear why they can swallow the entire prey without even chewing it or tearing it. You just don't want to go near their nest. Sure, you're not a tiny fish and pelican beaks are too small for a human being. But you don't want to be bitten now, do you? Okay, this one's going to frighten you only with its name. A shoebill stork is an impressively large bird, up to 5 feet, just below the average human height. No wonder they can fight a crocodile. Alright, a baby crocodile. But they need only their super powerful jaw to win in one hit. Still not afraid? Well, they make blood chilling noises, as if you were in some action blockbuster movie. Hmm. If you think these cowardly ostriches don't pose any danger, you got it wrong. Twice. First, they actually don't shove their heads in the sand, it's an optical illusion. And yeah, how are they even supposed to breathe in the sand? Second, these guys are kind of overprotective parents, so if you ever want to approach their young, these heavyweight beasts who can run as fast as a car within city limits are gonna come for you. 
Not scared yet? Well, you should be. Ostriches are the closest living relatives to T. rex, together with chickens. What seems look quite harmless, except for their foul smell, but that's another story. But their babies have notorious wings. The chick's flappers have two distinct claws that are multi-purpose. First, they are a sort of protection against predators. And second, they help them climb trees in case the baby's out of the nest. Once they grow up, the claws disappear just like milk teeth. Size doesn't matter at times. If you were a hummingbird, you'd have to eat almost 300 pounds of food per day to maintain normal weight with that little bird's metabolism. But the lifespan would be way shorter too, only about 3 to 5 years. If you dye your hair, you probably have more in common with a bearded vulture than you might think. We're probably the only two species in the world who use dye on purpose. Vultures dye their feathers with red soil to show their dominance over other birds. People? Well, we just like changes. California condors may not be as large as an aircraft, but they're huge anyways. Their wingspan is almost 10 feet. These are potentially dangerous for people, but chances that you ever meet them are slim. There are only about 200 of them left in the U.S. Here you are, looking for something yummy in the fridge, but you just can't see what you really want. If you were a bastion thrust, you'd break wind at the fridge. Yeah, <laughs> Sounds gross, but that's apparently the way these birdies look for hiding worms. They give them a gas attack, so the worms get shocked and yippee! They are now an easy target for a bastion thrush. Hold your nose and bon appetit! Okay, enough of those funky stories. Let's look at the skies. You wouldn't expect a poisonous bird on this list, but alas, I present to you the hooded pitahui. Scientists found out they were poisonous when they kept experiencing numbness and a burning sensation after handling these birds. There are lots of toxins in their feathers, especially on the underside. The birds don't produce toxins themselves. They probably get them from the beetles they eat. Or how about the spur-winged goose? These guys are notorious for being toxic too. And the toxicity comes from munching on blister beetles. Blech. It's safe to touch them, but eating one can lead to irreversible consequences. Wink, wink. The toxin remains even after cooking. Another bird you don't want to eat is a common quail. Don't mix it up with a Japanese quail, which is usually kept as poultry. Common quails can be really poisonous, leading to even such dreadful consequences as kidney failure. It all depends on the certain plants this bird eats. Good news, it's only poisonous during the migration period, but it's yummy and safe outside the migration. If you're not quite sure, it's better to avoid this one on your plate unless you want some muscle soreness. If you spot a cute, fluffy, snowy owl, you better close your eyes and run. They might look innocent, but in fact, they have razor-sharp talons, which they know perfectly how to use. They point them at the most vulnerable parts, like head, eyes, you got it. Do not mess with a snowy owl. One more species you don't want to contact is the little shrike thrush. Say that a few times fast. Shrike thrush. Just look at this tiny birdie and its innocent eyes. And don't let them fool you. Remember the way they look and never touch them. They're as poisonous as notorious Central and South American dart frogs. Blue-capped Ifrida may be tiny, but it has a toxic mechanism that makes this small birdie invincible. They eat only certain types of beetles that provide this bird with special toxins. Even if you touch it, you'll probably get numb as a result of intoxication. It's inedible since the toxins don't disappear even when it's cooked. Golden eagles are the power lifters in the bird's world. They can carry weights up to 4 pounds. They pick up tortoises and other prey easily. These mighty birds are strong enough to steal a toddler, but they actually never do that. Moreover, in Mongolia, people even use these eagles to hunt wolves. 
Canada geese have been living close to humans for years, but they're still wary of us getting near their homes, especially in the spring mating season. At this time, the geese can chase and bite people they consider a threat to their eggs, mates, or babies. If you want to avoid being attacked by these seriously angry birds, the best thing you can do is just slowly back away. Romantic seagulls in the sky don't seem to cause many problems. The worst thing they can do is leave you some unwanted droppings. Well, this impression is pretty misleading because these birds are very aggressive. Like all of their kind, they don't attack because they feel like doing so. So the rule is quite simple. Just don't touch those birds and stay away from their nests. Oh, and when the time machine is finally invented, be especially careful with the birds from the past. Velociraptors are long past existing, just like the rest of the dinosaurs. They had talons and feathers, so these guys were actual birds and not scaly lizards. By the way, these are the stiletto sharp talons you should be afraid of. These could cut anything. Beware if you go into the future, too. You never know what's waiting for you over there. Sharks, stingrays, crocodiles. If you encounter any of these whilst in the water, you know what to do. Get away quick. But let's look at some visually less intimidating underwater creatures that you should do the exact same thing upon seeing, as they can be just as dangerous in their own unique ways. Let's start with the pufferfish. Why is this bizarre looking fish that's usually no more than three feet in size something you should avoid? Well, Let's first address the strange appearance of the fish. For those of you who've never seen it, which is unlikely given its prominence in numerous film and television shows, you'll be aware that they have the unique ability to inflate themselves like a balloon. Researchers believe they developed this feature as a defense mechanism, given that their slow and clumsy swimming style makes them vulnerable to predators. So, instead of trying to escape by outswimming their chaser, the pufferfish can inhale large amounts of water or even air and expand up to three times their original size. They're able to do this because their stomachs are highly elastic, and by the time they're finished inflating, they look like a football. Well, a football with spikes, that is. These spikes are known as spines. Even though the fish can inflate to a large size, this still won't be enough to put off all its potential predators. So. These spines' purpose is to make the pufferfish even more inedible. Now, common sense would suggest that you should have no interest in jumping into the water and trying to eat a pufferfish for lunch. So why does being difficult to eat make them something you should avoid if you come across them in the ocean? Oh, did I not yet mention that pufferfishes are extremely toxic? Let's break it down. In the event a predator fancies proving themselves as fearless and unbothered by catching themselves a pufferfish as a snack, they won't enjoy it for long. Almost all pufferfish contain tetrodotoxin, a poisonous substance. On top of making a pufferfish a very unsatisfying meal from a taste standpoint, this substance is also lethal to fish. And not just fish, but humans too. The substance is almost 1,200 times more poisonous than the well-known poison cyanide. There's enough poison in one pufferfish to endanger nearly 30 humans. Oh, and in the event you come into contact with this substance, there's no known antidote. So yeah, maybe it's best to stay away from them altogether. Might not be the easiest thing to do, by the way, if you spend a lot of time in the ocean, as there are more than 120 species of pufferfish found worldwide most of which are in plentiful supply. They range in size from the one inch long dwarf or pygmy puffer to the giant freshwater puffer, which can grow to more than two feet in length. They all have four teeth that merge together into a beak-like form. Not to worry though. Thankfully, pufferfish don't have any real interest in humans. They're carnivorous, but their diet mostly consists of invertebrates and algae. Bigger pufferfish will even crack open and eat clams mussels, and shellfish with their hard beaks. The pufferfish are believed to synthesize their poison from the bacteria in the animals they munch on. Who would have thought that those fish that look like the similarly named puffer ball could be so dangerous? So what's the next underwater creature that you should express caution around? 
perhaps even more conspicuous with its deadliness, is the Congus geographus, more commonly referred to as the geography cone, which is the most dangerous out of the 500 species of cone snails. Yep, you heard that word right, snail. Not that different from the snails you used to pick up in your garden as a kid. This little guy, who typically measures between 4 and 6 inches, is better off to be avoided. However, you might be tempted to try and examine one, given their beautifully patterned brown and white shells, which are highly prized by shell collectors. So, why are they dangerous? Well, just like the pufferfish, they're also poisonous. Their venom is a complex concoction of hundreds of different toxins. It's delivered via a harpoon-like tooth propelled from an extendable proboscis, which is the long nose of any mammal. What is it with these creatures' lack of concern for human safety? Just like the pufferfish, there's no known antidote for the geography cone's venom. Treatment is limited to keeping any of their victims alive and well. Are there any side effects of their venom? Well, more bad news, yes, there is, and it's instant paralysis. It has to be, or the snail's prey would simply swim away to die, and the creature would be left with nothing for its efforts. You have to remember that speed isn't the strong suit of most species of snails. Most gastropods, another name for both snails and slugs, move at a maximum of 3 inches per minute. This means if a snail didn't stop to rest for an hour, it could still only travel a distance of 16 feet. Not exactly an underwater cheetah, this type of speed doesn't make them terrifying as far as predators go. But what is terrifying is how something so slow can still be so dangerous, and several humans have had unfortunate encounters with the creature. Luckily though, like the pufferfish, the geography cone doesn't have regular contact with humans, and accidents usually only occur due to divers startling or stepping on the creature, or picking up a shell, not knowing the creature's inside. The creature has more of an interest in seeking out fish, marine worms, or other snails as prey. The geography cone also provides evidence that Mother Nature might have a great sense of humor. Research has found that among the compounds found in cone snail venom are proteins that, when isolated, have massive potential as a pain-killing medicine. These proteins target specific human pain receptors and can be up to 10,000 times more potent than other pain-killing medicine without any of the potentially unhealthy added properties and side effects. So, pufferfish and underwater snails. Not exactly something as humans that we're going to think about when we have a gaping hole in our stomachs caused by hunger. Unlike crab meat, a total of 11 million tons of crab, lobster, and prawns are caught or cultured annually. Be careful about which type of crab you eat, though. Not all of them make an enjoyable meal. This is especially true of the Xanthidae family, which is a diverse family of crab species found in Australia. They're easily identifiable from their black-tipped claws. We should be grateful for this unique identifying feature, too. And not just because it could help bring attention to and prevent a potentially nasty pinch from the crab. No, what you really need to worry about with some members of the Xanthidae crab family is the toxins that they possess. Although they don't produce the poison themselves, the mussels and egg masses of some of the species have been found to accumulate two of the most dangerous natural substances known to man, saxitoxin and tetrodotoxin. The second one is the same poison found in the pufferfish. As little as half a milligram of either of these substances can cause serious damage to a human. The good news is that if you do encounter one of these poisonous xanthidae crabs, they don't have any ability to deliver the poison themselves, such as by a bite or jab. The only way to come into contact with their poison is by consuming them. And if you ever consider cooking that crab meat, note the toxins they possess are heat stable. This means that the toxins within the crab will persist in the tissue even if you boil them. If you really only have a xanthidae crab to eat, which, as we've established, you can't, there's a Japanese species of pufferfish that may be a viable alternative. It won't be easy, though. Only the most skilled chefs in Japan have licenses to use the creature as an ingredient to make a local delicacy known as fugu. How about you just run to the store and pick up some salmon? 
Then again, maybe it's best to just do as originally discussed and avoid pufferfish, poisonous snails, and toxic crabs at all costs. <sighs> it's a rainy Thursday evening. And you curl up in your armchair with a cup of hot chocolate and a new bright side video. Suddenly, you notice a scary shadow above you. There's a monster on the wall with 100 legs and antenna on its head. You start dialing 911 and your mom at the same time. While you're on the phone, your guest moves at lightning speed. Two seconds and you can no longer see it. You grab a mop and hide in your closet. With your hand shaking, you open the browser and type scary beast inside my house. You scroll before you finally find the right one. House Centipede. Turns out it only has 15 pairs of legs, two well-developed eyes, and two long, sensitive antenna to pick up smells and vibrations. It carries venom in the legs located by the head and near the mouth. And it can hold more than one prey in its legs using them like a lasso. All this makes your guest an excellent hunter. Somehow all the web pages you're looking at are telling you to leave the beast alone and be happy it's in your house. A lot of people are trying to get rid of them. But house centipedes are a natural and free pest control in your home. They'll help you get rid of bugs, flies, ants, moths, spiders, termites, and cockroaches. You, as a human, are simply not on their menu. They're active night hunters, and they don't leave webs or traps anywhere. They don't build nests in house either, and don't snack on your furniture, clothing, food, or pets. They move without making a sound and without leaving any dirty traces behind. House centipedes don't carry any diseases and in 99% of cases, get out at night when you can't see them. They're always moving around looking for prey. Because they move quickly, you might not notice them at all. They would only try biting you if you attack them first. Even then, they can't bite through skin. It feels like a light bee sting. Nah, nothing too crazy. This sounds promising, and you're almost ready to get out of your hiding spot. Ah! You scream like a girl. It's there again. Quickly, you don't need to feel comfortable sharing your home with this multi-legged creature. You grab a jar and a paper. It's running across the room. It's under the bookshelf. Wait for it to get out on the wall. You turn off the lights to make it feel more relaxed. It's still now. And so, it's done! You take it outside and hope it will still do the pest control job out there. You decide to secure the house from any other unwanted guests. So, house centipedes love moisture and like to hang out in bathrooms and basements most of all. You get downstairs and fill all the gaps in the floor and the walls. You check all the pipes in the bathroom and kitchen for leaks. Ah, perfect! Now it's time to go outside and remove dry leaves and twigs. Centipedes love to hide in there. It's been a busy night. You decide to watch some TV. Ouch! What a monster! It's a Goliath bird eater, the largest spider in the world. And just like the house centipede, it looks way scarier than it actually is. The Goliath diet includes insects, frogs, and rodents. It lives in northern South America. Despite its huge size, it can't hurt a human with its venom, no more than a bee sting. The next guest on the show is the whale shark. Obviously not a bug. It's the largest shark and fish in the world. Slightly bigger than a double-decker bus and as heavy as five elephants. They have 300 tiny teeth in their mouth, and they use those on plankton and the occasional fish. Whale sharks are slow swimmers and the kindest of all sharks. They even play with divers. In fact, humans are more dangerous to them than they are to humans. Despite its huge size, giant African millipede is a shy guy and would rather hide under the rocks all day. The only thing it can attack is dry leaves on the ground. This way, it plays its role for the environment. Australian thorny dragons are lizards with scary-looking spikes on their bodies. They move around the scrubs and deserts in search of ants. That's their favorite and only meal, and they can eat thousands of small ants a day. They catch them with their sticky tongues. Thorny dragons use their spikes to protect themselves against predators and won't ever attack a human. Their superpower is changing color depending on temperature. Wrinkle-faced bats live in Central and South America. They only eat fruit, and their face shape and skin helps them with it. They have terrible table manners and shove their face completely in their lunch. 
All the wrinkles help the fruit juices funnel directly into the mouth. Oh, what a great idea! I should try that! I.I.s are lemurs that live only in Madagascar. An old local superstition says meeting one of those is really bad luck. In fact, they're harmless creatures that feed on insects and larvae. They quickly tap on tree trunks to find food and take it out with their long middle fingers. I.I.s prefer to stay on trees and barely get down on the ground, so you're unlikely to ever bump into one anyway. If you ever visit Nepal or India and run into a crocodile with a long and narrow nose, don't panic, it's a gerial. Crocodiles are their closest relatives, but gerials are not one of them. They are their own unique species. Their weird noses are perfectly adapted to catch fish. It's their favorite food. Gerials are loving and caring parents and super shy creatures. They hide from humans and never attack them. Milk snakes look almost exactly like coral snakes. But unlike that highly venomous creature, they are completely harmless. Nature gave them those brightly colored stripes to trick prospective predators into thinking they are coral snakes. Thanks to that mimicry, they survive in different places from fields and rocks to agricultural areas and barns. Some people even keep milk snakes as pets. Yeah, but you better keep the different color patterns straight. Mata Mata spiky turtles are super lazy. They don't even swim, but walk in slow-moving streams and swamps. They only get out of the water to lay eggs. Mata Matas don't hunt, but wait for their food to come by. When they see a fish, they stretch their neck and swallow it like a vacuum cleaner. They have to do it because their jaws can't even chew. Hey, what's the motto with you? Virginia tiger moth is as scared of you as you are of it and tries to avoid contact at all costs. Their favorite food is leaves, birch, willow, maple, walnut, cabbage, and so on. They chew on the fleshy parts and leave the leafy skeleton behind. If you really annoy them, they'll try to protect themselves. But the most serious mark they can leave behind is slight skin irritation. Or some nunchuck marks if they're forced to use their martial arts. Eh, just kidding. Vultures have sharp beaks and talons and a reputation as a bad guy. In fact, they won't hurt a single living being. Their culinary preference is animal carcasses. Yum! This way, they make the world a cleaner and healthier place, kind of like animal control. Unlike most birds that have 360-degree vision, vultures only focus on what's going on beneath them with their 60-degree vision. Giant isopods are close relatives of shrimps and crabs living deep under the sea. They have alien-like bodies with dozens of sharp claws on the belly and four sets of jaws to hunt. But they don't always have food around them. That's why they slow down their metabolism to save energy and constantly live in semi-hibernation. When they're in danger, giant isopods curl up into a little ball and hide so that no one can find them. The star-nosed mole is the size of a hamster and the fastest eater in the world. It presses the creepy-looking star on its nose to the soil to find out what's in 10 to 12 different places in a second. The star has 100,000 nerve fibers in it that send information to the mole's brain. Not a bad compensation for almost no eyesight and good enough to hunt insects while being perfectly harmless to humans. Tailless whip scorpions, unlike their relatives, don't carry venom or toxins and can't bite, sting, or hurt humans in any other possible way. They can't even chew, so they sit and wait for an insect to pass by and detect it with their legs. They make great pets, and owners even put them on their faces without fear. Mm-hmm. That's okay, you go first. I'll, uh, watch from over here. <laughs>